Good evening and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we're back in our 2001 Fleetwood. We're continuing working on the remodel. We've gotten all of the drywall hung in the shower and now it's time to start preparing to set tile. You may have noticed as we're putting this shower together that the thing kind of goes together in layers. You build one layer on top of another and ideally what you want to do is to keep each one of those layers completely watertight. The idea is that if it penetrates one layer, uh, if the water penetrates one layer of your shower, that the next layer will stop it and move the water off to the drain without it staying inside of your thin set. The problem with setting tile is that if there's any cracks or weak spots in your grout, water will seep in. Both the grout and the thin set are porous. They will hold on to that water. If the water doesn't have some place to evacuate, that water will eventually break down both the grout and the thin set and the shower will come apart. Before all of that happens, you'll start noticing mold growing in the grout lines, especially at the bottoms of the walls. And what that's telling you is that water has gotten behind the wall. It has had no place to escape to, and it's just sat there. And eventually mold started growing on the drywall because it stayed wet for so long. So now we have nothing but blue board showing. Uh, we did go ahead and tape and mud the seams. We're not going to do any sanding or try to do a level two or level three on this. All we needed to do was get the tape on there. I didn't want an open crack sitting behind the tile. So I wanted to make sure everything was solid behind the tile. We've got that all taped and mudded. And the next step is to consider all of the different corners and edges where water might have a chance to penetrate. The reason we went with this pre-sloped shower pan was twofold. First, I don't want to have to try to set this slope so that I get that quarter inch of fall uh, from the corner all the way down to the drain. Second, this provides a much more stable bed than just thin set. Because if the water penetrates the tile and ends up inside of the thin set, it won't penetrate the styrofoam. And because this is sloped, the water will continue to move until it gets down here to this drain area. And here in the area of the flange, the water will have some place to get out. And there are weep holes uh, built into the system to allow the water to evacuate past the edge of the drain. One of the nicer features of this pan is that it does have a half inch gap all the way around the edge for the drywall to sit down into. So our drywall is extremely well seated on this pan and then we've also uh, used silicone here in the crack. So we've siliconed this crack up to make sure that if water does penetrate to this level, at least it won't get through and underneath the styrofoam. Along with taping and mudding all of these edges for the bench and for the shelf, we've also siliconed around the edge of the bench and the edge of the shelf to make sure that if water penetrates the tile, again, it doesn't get in behind the wall. This might be a good place for us to have a discussion about building codes. If you've ever tried to read some of those, you're going to find yourself a little confused when you're done. The codes are not designed for the average homeowner. They're designed for inspectors and contractors who have to rely on those codes and build to those codes. But that doesn't mean that's how you have to build your shower. If you were to try to read the codes, uh, the plumbing code, if you were to try to read the plumbing codes, that would be relevant to just this shower. It would probably take you several years of research just to figure out what you are allowed to do and not allowed to do in the shower with different products. 
The product that we've chosen is the Laticrete shower system, and it is an entire system that includes the pan, the bonding flange, all of the bonding membranes. So there's another membrane that's supposed to go over the top of that styrofoam and be cemented down before you put the tile on. There's also a liquid polymer that you paint on to seal everything up after you've got the membrane on. And then there's trim pieces that also go along with this system. If you were to use all of the Laticrete products to make sure that they all fit together and work perfectly together according to code, you would spend probably about three times as much on your shower than if you just went and bought thin set and a rubber uh, shower pan. So to manage the cost for us, because we're doing a remodel on a budget, we pick and choose. We use the pieces of the system that make sense to us and the parts that are just too expensive or too time consuming, we're gonna leave those out. Uh, in this case, we're not gonna put the membrane in. I think the membrane is probably overkill in the first place. We are going to use a liquid polymer to paint the inside of the shower. So this is the Mappy product. It's called Aqua Defense. It is similar to the Laticrete product, also similar to Redguard. So there are several different types of this product on the market. They all have slightly different colorations, slightly different covering uh, capacities, but they will all work with this styrofoam shower pan. So we're gonna use the less expensive Mappy product instead of the Laticrete product. But we also had an opportunity to use this on a shower in the depot back in Nevada when we were working that out. And we did have uh, an inspector who came by to determine whether or not we were allowed to use this product and only this product in our shower. Now at the depot, we had pulled permits for that project. It was an extremely large project, a lot of moving pieces. And we ended up doing a large portion of the plumbing. That meant I had to do my plumbing according to the code so that the inspector could sign off on uh, the portions that I did as well as the portions that the plumber did. When we got down to building the shower, we were told by code that we had to use purple board, not blue board, inside of our shower. Now, ideally, you'd want to use a cement backer board, but again, those are just too expensive and the blue board is sufficient to support tile. It doesn't need the cement backer board. This purple board that the inspector was talking about was an exclusive product available only for our contractors. There was one warehouse that was two and a half hours from our home that we would have to drive to just to pick up the, uh, the purple board. And you'd have to have a contracting license in order to make the purchase. So we had to come up with another solution. And that's when we discovered these liquid polymers. Uh, we used Redguard. We had the inspector come out. He spent about an hour reading the entire back of that uh, container of Redguard. And when he was done, he looked at us and said, hey, did you know you could actually line a swimming pool with this stuff? I said, yes. It says so right on the container. He said, you don't need the purple board. As long as you paint this all the way up the wall, you're going to be perfectly fine. So we're gonna stick with that. Uh, we think this is more than sufficient to make sure the water, if it should get through the tile, manages to get to the drain and out of the shower. So this is what we're going to apply to the inside of the shower now. We're gonna put on two coats. You just roll this on like you would any other paint, and that's gonna give us a perfect rubberized seal on the inside of the shower underneath our tile. It's not unlike applying paint to the wall. It's just a, a liquid rubber substance so it will set up and lock out moisture. Unlike painting, I don't have to be particularly careful about uh, runs and drips and everything else because this is all going to get covered with tile. So this is just going back behind the tile and you'll never see it, but we do want to make sure we get a good, smooth, even coat. Because any place where we have any holes or gaps in this is a potential water penetration. And we've already got these corners uh, sealed up really well with silicone. But we're also going to make sure we get a substantial amount of this sealant on it as well. We don't want to have any gaps or places for the water to get through.
This is not like paint in that you're not going to get a perfect pigment coat. So this is not going to uh, be completely solidly uh, blue-green when I'm done. It'll look more like a blue wash than it does blue paint. But it's 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 the but it's the physical property of the polymeric compound that we're interested in because when it dries, it won't allow water to penetrate. It creates a a barrier. Uh, it's a unbroken barrier, like a big sheet of plastic on the wall. I'm also just going to put on a little extra over the top of this tape. The tape does have a tendency to absorb water and moisture. So I want to give it a chance to soak up as much of this compound as it can too. So keep our brush handy and switch over to the roller. So you can apply this with a brush or a roller. I've used both. Both work well. Uh, we've also investigated using the sprayer so we can spray this on. Of course, you're going to get a much smoother, much more even coat if you spray it. But this stuff is extremely thick, and you'd have to water it down significantly to get it to go through a sprayer. is really thick. It's almost like a, a pudding rather than a paint. It's a little difficult to work with because it's so thick. Just remember that the objective is to get everything covered. You want it all completely covered. It doesn't have to look like a paint job. It just has to cover completely. So after doing the shower there at the depot in Nevada, I enjoyed using the Red Guard product so much we even used it on our chicken coop. So rather than putting tar paper on the roof of the chicken coop, I painted it up with Red Guard. We had a little bit left over from doing the shower. And it uh, did a really good job of sealing up the sheeting that we used for the roof of the chicken coop. Certainly a little more expensive than using tar paper though. And just like that, we've got a coat of the Aqua Defense on the entire shower. I only went up six feet or so. We're not going to be getting water on the top of the wall. 
We may not even cover that with tile. It may actually remain drywall. This back wall will get covered all the way, but the top of the wall is never going to get wet. I am going to get some spray foam. We'll get the window and door spray foam and we'll seal this crack up at the top of the shower. And then our aqua defense is what creates the seal on the rest of the shower. So we have a perfect elastomeric coating. Well, it will be perfect. Right now, that's just one coat. We're going to need to get at least one more coat on this. I wasn't sure if we were supposed to coat the pan or not, but as I thought about it, we could have water penetrate way out here on the edge and then travel across the styrofoam, but then not be able to get back on top of the membrane to get out of the drain. And the only way to avoid that was to have this membrane solid across the entire floor. So I went ahead and painted it on. It's only 16 extra feet, just a, maybe a half a cup of the Aqua Defense used up there. So we're going to need to let this dry. We'll let it dry overnight. Tomorrow we'll be back in here. We'll put on a second coat. Then we'll be ready to lay some tile. So we didn't purchase the tile for the walls or the seat yet simply because we're on a budget. Folks, you can do a remodel on a budget. Just because you're tight on funds doesn't mean you can't improve the world you live in. You can change the space even if it's just a little bit at a time. So we'll purchase those tiles when the next paycheck comes in. We can wait between now and then. I've got plenty of work to do with the Aqua Defense and we do have the tile for the floor. So we could go ahead and lay that. So we'll go ahead and make that progress and when the money comes in, we'll continue the project forward. We do appreciate you joining us on the Return Homestead today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please just take a quick minute, open that window up and hit the subscribe button. While you've got the window open, hit the thumbs up button as well. That lets the algorithm know you enjoyed the video and they'll share it out with more people. We'll see you next time.